Miami getting it done. Double OT against the former ACC champions, Clemson Tigers. Final score, Miami 28, Clemson 20. Don't look now, but the Mario Cristobal experience in Coral Gables, to me at least, feels like it's starting to take shape. Is it a finished product? We'll talk about that here in just a second. But I think what you saw yesterday is a tremendous step in the right direction. Something you can put on the bulletin board and say, hey, look at this. Look at where we're headed, boys. Forget Clemson's not the class of the ACC this year. I don't want to worry about that. I'm talking about the way that you played in this game with a lot against you. Still finding a way in double OT kind of fashion, in comeback kind of fashion, mind you. Hurricanes victorious. What does it mean going forward for them? What can we take away from this game? Heck, how about the Mario Cristobal era as a whole? What do we, what do we talk about with it, with this game, from what we learned from this game? Talk about that right now. Before we do that, though, Miami Hurricane Faithful, want y'all dialed in right here. Want y'all subscribe to this show because we talk college football and only college football every single day of the year. We don't take a day off. It's ball and only ball. There's no agendas. There's no extra stuff baked in here. No hot takes. Like it's, it's just this game that you love and we're not here for other controversial agendas or what have you. Like we just want to celebrate this sport that happens on fall Saturdays. That's the greatest thing to ever exist. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you're dialed in. Also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at JD Pikel. Okay, with that out of the way, take a look at this game now. For Miami, man, they had every reason to roll over. Every reason. Nobody would have blamed Miami if they said, ah, you know what, we're, we're down 17-7 in the fourth. Our starting quarterback is not playing. We've lost the last two. Everyone's poking fun on social media. We're good. White flag, tap out, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say about Miami. Now, there would have been some noise. There would have been some noise about Mario Cristobal and his team and all that. But, like, it would have made sense. It would have made sense. We would have talked about it today and said, hey, they were kind of up against it. It was a tough spot for them after the last two, kind of draining. It is what it is. Miami didn't do that. I saw Miami team that did something we hadn't seen in a minute. Respond. They respond, and I think that takes pride in your program. It takes belief in your staff, contrary to what social media would allow you to believe. And it also, to be real now, talking about the roster, the way they've developed, takes talent. And I'm not here telling you that Clemson is the college football playoff contender they've been the last couple of years or that they're going to be you know, the ACC champs once again because Clemson very clearly at this point in time uh, does not look that way. But even so, Clemson is a talented team. And it is about the Jimmys and the Joes to some degree. And they found a way to play gutsy and to match up enough with them to win this football game. I think the talent at Miami, too, cannot be ignored. As gritty as this was, can't be ignored the talent they showed. Now, watching this game back, man, as we're driving back from Columbus, Ohio, all the way to Nashville, and we're watching it on the YouTube TV, on the phone, and like, it just felt so much to me like you could see the Mario Cristobal brand of football that he wants to bring to Coral Gables start to implement itself. And the first part of that is the run game. We say this a lot with coaches. You can't change where you're from. Not talking about geographics. I'm talking about what you were in the football world. Mario Cristobal, offensive lineman. Pretty safe to say he wants to run the ball. They ran the ball to 211 yards yesterday. That's setting the tone. That's being physical in the trenches. That's why you went to the portal. That's why you start a guy like Francis Malagoa, who's a freshman. There's a reason why they revamped on that side of the ball, re reason why they revamped that unit specifically, and you needed that yesterday to make things easier for your quarterback stepping in with Tyler Van Dyke unable to go. Emory Williams, like, was he amazing statistically? Not necessarily, but I tell you what, man, that final drive, when they needed him to step up and deliver the ball downfield, his eyes were wide open. Like you talk about that scene from the Friday Night Lights TV show. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Friday Night Lights. Jason, or no, it's Matthew Saracen. Sorry, not Jason Street. Apologize. Matt Saracen steps into a Hail Mary, hucks it deep. And the head coach looks at him and says, son, did you close your eyes when you threw that Hail Mary? He says, no, sir, my eyes were wide open. 
That was Emery Williams yesterday. He wasn't throwing Hail Marys, but he was stepping into that thing with confidence. There was no hoping. There was no wishing. There was no guessing. It was, listen, man, I'm a collegiate football player too. I got recruited to play here too. A lot of people wanted me to play on their team. I can do this. Stepped in when his team needed it. Really impressed by him. Really, really impressed by the way that he responded. And I think that is, again, a testament to the organization, a testament to that staff, a testament to that roster equipping him to have the game that he had and not have to go win the game for you. But when you need him to make plays, having the belief around him, having the belief within himself to go and deliver. The defense, man. Less than one yard a carry from Clemson yesterday. Less than one yard a carry. You're going to win a lot of football games if you allow yet less than one yard a carry. Five sacks. It was gritty all the way to the end. And that final play, like it, it would have been... I'm sure Miami would have would have taken it if they had scored to walk it off. Like if they had gotten a touchdown in overtime and that was the way things ended and, and they were able to, you know, kind of storm the field after that and that was the way the overtime shook out. But it just felt poetic that it was the defense to make that play. It was the defense to play the the read option perfectly from Cade Klubnick and chase him around the edge and make that play to finish it. Like the gritty defensive play I thought was just Every, in every sense of the word, embodied this brand that Mario Cristobal is bringing to Coral Gables. Physical, confident, together, never say die, resilient, like all those things we saw in this game yesterday. Now, I don't want to be too hyperbolic and say, well, Miami's winning the national title this year. Like, we understand that this is still a process. It's still year two. But I think you're at a point, like we alluded to at the top of this segment, you're at a point in Coral Gables now where you see the house starting to take shape. Does it have electricity now? Maybe not yet. Does it have a pool in the backyard? Probably not. Does it have the, the tiling on the walls and, and the finished roof? Not yet. But you know what you see? You see the foundation of things. You see the foundation of what he wants to build there. You see the culture of what he wants to build there. A lot of people were talking about taking a knee and all this, that, and the other. Like that just dominated social media and I mean, we sat here on this show and a lot of y'all that watched the show kind of said the same thing. Like, are we just going to ignore that Miami had that game won? That Miami, in theory, and again, woulda, shoulda, coulda, it, you know, we don't live in hypotheticals, but Miami has played well enough to only have one loss. Okay, so the Georgia Tech game is a, a sick to your stomach kind of thing, but like everyone was so quick to say Miami's this, that, and not well coached, and they're falling apart, and watch them turn on each other, and like, Y'all, it was one game. It was one game, and what Mario Cristobal is building in Coral Gables is bigger than one game. I believe it's bigger than one season. And so I'm not here to tell you that it's a finished product. In fact, I think Mario Cristobal would tell you the exact opposite. But the way that they're trending, to have a benchmark win like this, even with Clemson not being Clemson this year, I don't care. The fashion in which they won, the resilience they had to show without Tyler Van Dyke, says a lot about where they're at right now and I think it could say a lot about where they're headed so keep an eye on Miami now keep an eye on the ACC and what's going on in that conference and I'm telling you I think going forward now for the next couple of years I would be surprised if we're not talking about the U being in the mix so make sure you subscribe right here we'll keep an eye on Miami going forward We'll keep an eye on everything in college football going forward because that's what we do here on this show, The Hard Count. Hey, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Follow me on Twitter and on the gram to stay up with all that we got going on here. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.